FBI data shows that just under 250,000 cases are unsolved in the United States of America alone. And that number seems to grow faithfully every year, 6,000 people to be exact. And for each new case that is introduced, another case gets pushed to the back burner. Cases like this next story. November 2nd, 1963. The world would make way for Tammy Joe Alexander. Although Tammy was born in Atlanta, Georgia, her family would later move to Brooksville, Florida, where she would ultimately finish off her education. Tammy would be raised with her half-sibling, Pamela Dyson, and her mother. Her biological father wasn't really around much now. Her sister, Pamela Dyson, describes the house as chaotic, not stable. In fact, their mother was hooked on prescription drugs. In the year of 1979, Tammy Jo Alexander would be 16 years old, and with problematic situations arising at her home, Tammy Jo Alexander would decide to leave. She would become a teenage runaway. When a young teenage Tammy decides to leave her house, it would be the last time that she would step foot outside of it or inside of it, because Tammy would never return home. Unbeknownst to her family, Tammy Jo Alexander would lose her life. But not only would she lose her life, she would also lose her identity. Tammy Jo Alexander would be erased with crime. This field we're in right now was in corn, and it was in the fall, of course, and uh, we got, we were get, preparing to come down here and start harvesting, and none of this had been touched yet. We came down, and we are in the pickup coming down, it's Route 20 out here, and we were on our way down and going down to the local coffee shop to have a cup of coffee, and on the way down, I noticed this red, object out here in the field and I said to my father I said I believe there's somebody out there in the field laying down so we pulled pulled down turned around came back pulled out came out walked through the corn and sure enough there was the body of Jane Doe at that time laying face down and my father first you know we we're on our way in he says oh it's probably something left over from Halloween, somebody scarecrow or something. As we got closer and looked, we both realized, wow, this is this is not a scarecrow. November 10th, 1979, her body would be discovered by a farmer in Caledonia, New York. An autopsy would conclude that she died due to gunshot wounds. Along with those wounds, Tammy would sustain facial injuries. The facial injuries were so severe that the police had to recreate her face using a sketch artist. The police have no leads, they have no suspects, and the only thing that they have at their disposal is this sketch. But this sketch would be infamous for decades and for years to come. She will only be known as the Caledonia Jane Doe. The lead detective assigned to this case would be a man who goes by the name of John York. John York and his division would vigorously work this case. However, with all the efforts that they put in, they just couldn't obtain any new information. Not a name, not a location in which she was from. They were stuck and no new information was coming in. So this case was quickly turning cold. All the police have is the location that they found her at, along with a couple of items that were found on her person. A small DNA sample is collected, as well as gifts believed to be given to her by her killer. November 10th, 1980 would quickly come around. It would be one year since the Caledonia Jane Doe would be found, and the police still don't have any new information. Tips come in, but they're quickly proven to be false. There were even a few suspects in the lineup. At one point, Christopher Wilder was even considered a suspect, but then ultimately ruled out. Time continues to elapse. The police don't form any new leads, and now it's a full-on cold case. Then, 
the police seemed to catch a break. There would be a turn of events. The police would receive a written statement from a guy who said that he was eating at a diner. But while at this diner, he said that he saw someone eating there who resembled the Caledonia Jane Doe sketch. He says that while this young lady was in there eating, she was with a man. They were there eating and then they left together. Well, from this witness statement, the police would be able to draw up a sketch and they would release that sketch to the public. But when they release it, it only makes the situation worse because the sketch is so generic that it generates too many leads. It's just another anonymous face, just like the Caledonia Jane Doe sketch. A few more years pass and it is now 1984. The police are about to receive a big break in this case, at least that's what it looks like. It would be this year that Henry Lee Lucas would confess to the murder of the Caledonia Jane Doe. Along with this confession came hours of interrogation and the police ultimately concluded that he wasn't the killer because he couldn't identify the body. So since Henry can't give the detectives a name, they decide to take him as not credible and they took him back to his cell. Henry Lee Lucas would perish in the year of 2001. So if his story was true, he took it to the grave. So by this point in the story, I know you're wondering, where is the Caledonia Jane Doe's family? Is anyone searching for? Why has no one come forward to claim the body? This is a young 16 year old girl. Certainly someone has to be looking for. Years are passing. Things are changing. The name of the Caledonia Jane Doe has been reduced to nothing more than table talk over dinner. New investigators take on the case, but no one can seem to crack it. But then something miraculous happens. Social media would breathe life into this cold case. Tammy Jo Alexander would be formally identified on January 26 of 2015. She would finally have her identity back. This grace would come in form of an old friend from school, a woman who goes by the name of Laura Noel. Now, Laura Noel was just going about her daily routine and she thought about Tammy. She thought about how they were friends in school and she decided that she would get on Facebook and try and look her up. This little gesture would actually lead the police to Tammy's sister and the police would decide to try it a different way. They would obtain a DNA sample from Pamela. Her sister's DNA would lead to her discovery. It was DNA that finally confirmed to law enforcement that the young girl found in Caledonia was actually Tammy Jo Alexander from Florida. That DNA came from Tammy Jo's sister. Well, Casey, Pamela Dyson says that she was only a child when her sister Tammy Jo Alexander went missing. She says she never imagined that more than three decades later, it would be her DNA that would help finally solve at least a piece of this case. Well, just today, she received official confirmation that Caledonia Jane Doe was her sister, Tammy. Very In a proud. statement, Pamela told me she's grateful to the Livingston County Sheriff's Office for never giving up and Tammy's friend Laurel, who finally reported Tammy missing. She also said, quote, we are grateful to have closure after 35 years. And I would like to thank everybody who's been involved and worked on this case. My sister was a vibrant, beautiful young woman. When the world got wind of Tammy Jo Alexander's story, people became upset. They were wondering, how did a 16-year-old girl go missing for this long? Was her family even looking for her? Well, the sheriff in the surrounding area in which the mother and her half-sibling lived said that they never filed a police report. They never reported her missing, etc. Now, the family says that they did file a report. However, the police didn't take it serious and they threw it out. Lie, the body of a Brooksville teen who was missing for decades finally found. Now, deputies claim that Tammy Jo Alexander's family never filed a missing persons report, but tonight they're telling ABC Action News reporter Jacqueline Glace that is simply not true. I'm not sure which story to believe, but I would have to believe that if someone was 16 years old when they went missing and it took over 35 years just to identify them, I'm going to have to assume that you weren't looking for them. This case could have been solved long ago had she had a parent, 
had she had a family that cared enough to want to even make a missing persons report. Waiting 36 years, family of missing Brooksville teen Tammy Jo Alexander trying to cope with word that the body of a Jane Doe found murdered 1,200 miles away in a New York cornfield back in November of 1979 is in fact the beloved Tammy. I feel like Tammy ran away. She wanted to start a new life. Tonight, they're coming forward to let the public know they did care about Tammy. Without a shadow of a doubt, that there was a report made. I do, however, think maybe it was not taken seriously. She was a runaway. Both the Hernando and Livingston County Sheriff's offices are sticking by their claims a report was never filed. Tammy's family says technology like cell phones, the internet and social media did not exist at the time, but they did what they could on their own to track Tammy down, like checking phone books. And in the mid 90s, when technology took off, launching an online search, ultimately a DNA match leading them to a bittersweet end to their loved one who'd been buried as an unidentified girl. This case is tragic. It's sad, but it does have an happy ending because at least we know who she is. I'd like to say thank you to everyone who has came here to help us celebrate the life of Tammy Jo because the short time we had her deserves a celebration. I wanted you to know a few things about the girl who has been so loved in your community. Tammy Jo was a sweet and gentle person who used to use her beautiful smile to hide her pain. She was outgoing and friendly, adventurous, and perhaps a little mischievous. She never met a stranger, and if you spoke to her for a few minutes, you felt as if you had known her forever. Well, hi Kevin, how you doing? I'm fine. That was nice to hear from you. I'm very glad to get your letter. Those who knew her never saw a sign of the turbulence that she lived in every day. There was no hint of the pain and fear that lived inside of her. Nobody who saw her would ever guess that she lived in a home where she was subject to constant abuse. That is why she was a frequent runaway. It was her escape and her safety net. Please remember it was 1979. That was a different era with different circumstances. Kids ran away and they came home safe. None of us knew or imagined the horror Timmy might meet. I never for a moment thought my sister could be deceased. In my mind, she was living happily somewhere with a man she loved and children she doted on. It never occurred to me that someone would murder my sister and even now in my mind, I cannot understand why. I gotta go now, so you take care. And be careful.